call meeting to order, special committee of the whole meeting. Um, at this time, I'd ask Councillor McMillan to read the blessing and land acknowledgement, please. As we gather, we recognize that we are on Treaty 3 lands, which are steeped in rich Indigenous history and home to many First Nations and Métis people today. We continue to be thankful for the partnerships with our Indigenous people. We give thanks for the many blessings we enjoy in the city of Kenora. We seek wisdom in our minds, clearness in our thinking, truth in our speaking, and always love in our hearts, so that we may try always to unite the citizens of Kenora. Let these principles guide us in our decision making. Thank you, Councillor. Declaration of pecuniary interest. Uh, this time I'd ask any member of council if, if they wish to declare pecuniary interest and the general nature thereof pertaining to items on today's agenda or from a meeting in which a member was not in attendance. Seeing none. Uh, Harborfront Redevelopment Plan Project Review. Uh, so we'll open with Adam and or Megan. So Sounds welcome, good. the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, so the, uh, the purpose of today's meeting is just to uh, provide uh, Council kind of an in-depth in uh, perspective into the Harborfront uh, Redevelopment Plan, um, provide a little bit more background, and then allow our consultant who has uh, joined us today to, to really give in uh, some detail into the to next steps. Um, the inception of this, is this project uh, dates back to 2016. Uh, so at that point in time, uh, uh, Council was debating the development of a T-intersection along the harbour front. Uh, to which uh, the feedback was is that we needed to formalize a, a vision for that area prior to, to making that type of investment. So uh, since that time, um, staff were able to receive NHSC funding uh, for the uh, Harborfront uh, Redevelopment Conceptual Plan. Um, and then once that has been, uh, that was accepted by Council in 2019, uh, to which we are now uh, commencing on the detailed design work. So I'll let Megan, our project champion on this, uh, kind of give a little bit more detail on, uh, uh, on the steps leading up to uh, where we are today. Hi, good morning, Council. Um, so as Adam mentioned, this project really started back in 2016 when uh, we were looking at the opportunity to redevelop the T intersection, um, that intersection at 2nd Street, Water Street and Bernier Drive. And it was felt at that time that there could be a broader opportunity to consider redevelopment of the harbour front as a whole. So looking at a larger project scope, which would be the south parking lot, all the way to Husky the Musky. And um, as Adam mentioned, we were successful in receiving funding from senior levels of government to undertake that master planning project, uh, which was completed in December of 2019 and which council accepted at that meeting. So since that time, um, you know, we had really been positioning ourselves to move forward with next steps. And in 2020, mid 2020, um, council approved funding applications to go forward to three different agencies. So FEDNAR, NOHFC, and then the Tourism, Economic Development and Recovery Fund. Um, and those applications were for the next phase of the project, which was to deliver detailed design and tender specifications. So through this work, we're looking to develop these detailed designs for 10 of the 13 project zones within the Harborfront Development Plan. And Constantine is going to provide an overview of those zones to you uh, momentarily. But, um, you know, that was back in 2020 and those applications were submitted. And then we were successful in receiving funding from those programs to move forward with this next stage of work. And so in September of this year, we delivered a competitive process to seek a consulting team that would um, help us through this next phase. And Council awarded the project to HTFC Planning and Design, KGS, and Number 10 Architects at a special meeting in October. And so uh, I'm very excited this morning to introduce Constantina Duvry. I know many of you have uh, met her previously um, through the master planning process and through other projects. So I've had the pleasure of working with Constantina on several initiatives since my time at the city, including um, downtown revitalization, as well as the wayfinding program. And so uh, 
um, I guess with that, maybe I'll, I'll turn it over to Constantina and she is going to lead us through today's session. Um, we did have a similar session with a group of internal city staff at the beginning of November and um, it was like such a terrific day. I'll just say a couple words about that because we have this incredible team um, of interdepartmental representatives. So we have community services, members from tourism and parks uh, and the museum. We have uh, development services reps, so um, through economic development and planning. Um, as well, we're working with folks in engineering and infrastructure. And then um, we've also included um, Heather, who's working with us um, on the communications uh, kind of administrative side. So we have this like really incredible interdepartmental team, and we were able to sit through a similar session as uh, the one that you're going to work through today. Um, and we were all very, um, very excited at the end of it about the discussion and the outcomes of that meeting. And and so, okay, now I will turn it over to you. I'm done. Um, but, um, Constantina. Well, hi, everyone. I just want to say hello to Mayor and Council. And uh, it's nice to see your faces again after a long uh, sort of uh, departure seeing you guys. And so hello to, I think, Councillor Shays. Am I right? Okay, nice to meet you. Uh, I just wanted to say that um, I'm thrilled. I know HTFC and KGS are super thrilled to get to work on this project. You know this is dear to my heart and I really want to do a, an amazing job and I'm just very excited to be working on it. And as um, Megan mentioned, we thought today would be great to do just a little refresh on the master plan. Um, many of you may have forgotten some of the pieces and um, we have a new counselor, so um, it would probably be good to do that. So we'll just, we'll just run through the master plan. I have the PDF, which is downloadable on your, on your website, I'm sure. And, uh, um, but I'll run through you through it very, um, as quickly as I can, but enough detail that it kind of refreshes. And then um, what we we're hoping to do is what we did with the, what we're calling the CIT group, which is the city implementation team of all of the sort of department heads etc um, is maybe talk about the overall plan because things have changed since we did the master plan master plans are high level and um, are not uh, detailed design and now we're commencing into detailed design just even at that first meeting with the CIT the design is changing you know based on you know where the world is today versus 2018 19 when we worked on this plan and that's pretty typical of a master plan you know we get into detailed design we get boots on the ground we get surveys topo um, we're getting geotech done so we're really um, progressing into more detailed design but we'll start here with the master plan and and I can baby step you onto some of the changes as well um, and as Megan mentioned um, the Harbor Front Business Development Plan had a very, very extensive public engagement component. Um, we had a steering committee that represented people from the community, um, city staff, um, counselors, um, and then um, we went through multiple design workshops to sort of come up at the beginning with um, the objectives and um, here they are these are the goals of the study that the community um, brought us to through those sessions um, I'll just name them out so if it's hard to read uh, four season destination they wanted the heart the harbor front to be to have connectivity so meaning connecting to other important parts of the downtown Kenora um, they wanted sustainability and they didn't just mean environmental they wanted it to be um, sustainable economically as well as well as socially sustainable um, and and really look to health and wellness um, the fourth one, and I'll come back to it after, is embracing Anishinaabe and Métis culture here. Uh, the fifth one is safety and security. Uh, the next, opportunities for business. Inclusivity, so inclusive to all age groups, all people, all cultures, locals primarily, and tourists as well. Programming. They wanted to see additional programming on the harbor front, <coughs> events and such, and they wanted it to be a place for learning. They wanted it to be a place to learn about the history of Kenora, the history again of the Anishinaabe and Métis culture, and also 
um, an educational area about the lake and that ecosystem and the forest and you know the environment that we're surrounded by. So um, after coming up with these nine goals from through workshopping, um, when we realized that embracing Anishinaabe and Métis culture became very important, we added engagement with the three First Nations um, that are part of common ground. Um, we reached out to all three. We had very extensive engagement with what is now called Nis Nisachuan, which was something different before. And we had a couple of sessions with them and um, continuous conversations and uh, very exciting because we never uh, did the traditional end to the project. We kept it open because they were hopeful that they would continue to be um, part of this as a partner. We met also with uh, uh, the Chief Skeed from Wajushkanigam Nation as well and had um, a great meeting with them and the notes are part of this document appendicized. And so we had lots of um, engagement. That engagement, we had a spring feast, you can see the beautiful picture here and we have some counselors there. Um, as well as Adam and Megan. Um, so we had um, a great input that we were able to go back again to our steering committee with, uh, with our findings. And so we workshopped through the whole process. We came up with three scenarios that, um, that I, they're kind of shown here in the model. There's scenario one, which shows um, what we can do with the land we have, because we are, there is like a limited land along Lakeview Drive and um, quite a bit of parking. And we took people through different scenarios because parking is really important to people to have somewhere to park, to go to work, um, and so on and so forth. So we took them down exercises of what can you have if you were to take some parking away. And um, interestingly enough, and I can go very briefly through some of the parking. You should know that part of the study, there was a transportation engineer on the team who did a transportation study. I presented that to council. It's, part, it's an appendix in here as well to find out when those peak times are for parking and where the stresses are. The, the uh, transportation engineer found three peak times during the summer and studied it. That was provided to the people in the steering committee as they chose actually the third option where they wanted to try to maximize the amount of amenities and business development opportunities on the waterfront and um, balance that with some parking for um, needs for, for, for all this additional function and try to find parking in other places. Part of that, um, the reason they came to that decision was based on the transportation engineers parking study and also part of our statistics which found that uh, a large portion, I can't remember what percent, it could be 70 or 80 percent of the parking, south parking lot is monthly parkers. So there is no, there's not very much parking for visitors. And when we say visitors, we don't just mean tourists. We just mean somebody who lives in Key Wait and who wants to come to the harbor front. So there is, so we came to that um, um, thought and, and conclusion that, you know, there needs to be a better balance and lots of efforts have been taking place in terms of adding parking at the rec center or down the first street extension parking lot. And in our master plan, we explored various ideas about how to deal with that. Um, some of the strategies are adding more parking along Lakeview Drive, and you'll see this in the master plan. Some of the strategies, of course, were um, looking to provide parking at the south parking lot um, during uh, summer peak when visitors want to park, and then giving people their parking lot back in the winter. So there's lots and lots of ways to deal with this. However, um, in this stage that we're headed in, and here's the master plan, as Megan mentioned, we're only going to be doing in the construction drawings and detailed design development, we're only going to be doing um, um, the, 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 from Husky, from McLeod Park, pardon me, moving down all the way through all these zones up to where you see the forest and the pier. So the impacts, of course, um, we're not headed into um, some of these other 
projects that are, are bigger projects and longer term, such as the number 11, which was the information center, number 9B, which hangs off the pier, which was the resto bar, and 9C, which is a pool and sauna. Those, those ones were, are not considered as part of our project today, but we will consider them with you in terms of future development potentials and how they might tie in. So we've been asked to further design McLeod Park. We've been asked to design um, the boardwalk, which we call the D Indigenous Art Walk, and we can talk about that a bit more. Number four, which is Lakeview Drive, providing more parking on the north side and, and exploring the idea of more intensive parking on the road as well. Oh, I'm already thirsty. I have two more hours chatting, sorry. <laughs> We're also looking at the tent cell structure and trying to expand use of that. Um, the master plan, we're also looking at the idea of a new, a new washroom facility and gathering area where the tent cell structure, the, 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 sorry, the, um, what is it called? I forgot. Mm. Not the white cap, sorry. Oh, this old pavilion. pavilion, thanks. And then also the idea of bringing back um, some plants, some trees, and a playground because that we lost that when we put the tensile structure in. So looking at bringing some play elements back to balance out, you know, the performance zone, and then of course the pier, which will have some wonderful kiosks and activities on them, and, and Bernier Drive. So I'm going to go through the, them a little bit more specifically, but I thought I'd outline a little bit about the extensive engagement that was done. So for McLeod Park, um, we are looking at um, some of the challenges of McLeod Park is it's not highly visible to people, it's not really to visitors. Um, they're not very aware that it is a washroom facility there. Um, there's not, the tugboat is a wonderful um, amenity there, but there is maybe not enough stuff to support that, to attract people, as well as, um, you know, just providing more opportunities for people to gather outside. So um, McLeod Park is being, um, is the first project that we're developing as there may be funding to actually construct it. So we're kind of pushing that forward. And in our CIT meeting, um, what, what was wonderful came out of um, the Braden from the museum was we were thinking about a navigational interpretation here, but um, they reminded us that you know there's a big logging history here, and that um, that would be a wonderful thing to interpret. And so we've started to explore that um, and find interpretive elements to put here, make it more accessible, more attractive, provide some seating for people, picnic benches to gather, as well as maybe some play features that are um, interactive for children to, to explore the idea of the logging industry because we, we uh, admittedly thought the tugboat would have a nice navigational um, history behind it, but it actually is more about logging. So, um, we, so we've, as I've said, this was a master plan in 2018 and additional insights from your, your staff has given us some new directions as we develop this, this one. Um, the next one um, on the list is Husky's Landing. It's not part of our scope, but of course we, can, we are thinking about it and the connection between McLeod Park and Husky's Landing. And I'll speak to that a little bit when we talk about Lakeview Drive. Um, the next project we'll be looking at more deeply is the Green Belt. The Green Belt is, um, I think it was one of Council's favorite because of the idea of extending that boardwalk because what we were able to do at Harborfront is by having this boardwalk, um, we were able to expand the land uh, area, which is very tight on Lakeview Drive, the Green Belt. We were able to expand that area to actually get the tensile structure in, to get the tensile structure in. We needed the boardwalk to allow people to pass by, and so it overhangs the water. So th there was also interest in controlling the geese problem there, and with the pandemic, it's become even more important to provide wider um, pathways, multi-use pathways for citizens to walk and create a nice connection between the gateway, which is Husky the Muskie and um, McLeod Park, 
all the way to what we think of the more intensive part of Harbour Front where the white cap is. So this barred walk is sort of an opportunity um, in speaking with First Nations to begin to talk about um, Treaty 3 land and having some historical information about the Indigenous peoples who inhabited this place before us. Um, it also can become this beautiful walkway um, with artwork, with interpretation, and we can see it sort of culminating um, with some additional docking, which is really important um, for Kenora to start to provide, we heard, some docking for larger boats because right now they just have their marine balls. And so we started to explore the idea of having larger docking for, for larger boats that want to come. Um, and also more capacity because the, at the time there was uh, an understanding of additional needs there. In, in conjunction with, the, with the, um, the docks, we were picturing having some business opportunities with seasonal kiosks like you'll see at the Forks or in Montreal's harbour or, or, Har or uh, Halifax's harbour where they may have um, seasonal um, activities out of the kiosks, uh, business people perhaps renting out Prince Country skis, or somebody could be selling fishing tackle, or you know, bikes can be rented here, or kayaks. So um, there's opportunity for various um, things to happen on in those kiosks. Lakeview Drive is a big part of how the the green belt works, and how um, as we develop on the harbor front. We're hoping more people want to visit here. So we'll need to think about taking away a bit of parking to be able to build that forest and playground and sitting area in this first phase of our work. Um, so starting to look at the idea that Lakeview Drive should have more um, uh, accessible parking. There should be more parking on the north side. And by doing that, we're gonna have people crossing Lakeview Drive. So we need people to have appropriate crosswalks to get to that parking that are safe. Um, we need cars to slow down, similar to the way that when people enter the roundabout and they enter Main Street, they naturally are slowed down by the roundabout and the bump outs that we put in, um, creating nicer crossings that people can cross only two lanes of traffic on Main Street rather than four. Um, we want to do the same sort of thing here and provide a couple of crossings at Lakeview Drive to help people get across to those parking lots and get traffic to slow down. So as part of the Lakeview Drive, we've also, with the transportation engineer and our municipal team that's on this team that we're on now, is looking at some of the ideas that we put forward in the master plan, such as the median as you come off the bridge, and having a at-grade crossing to McLeod Park between Husky, the Muskie, and McLeod Park, because today, um, it is unsafe for certain groups, or they feel unsafe, to go under the road to get between those two parks. So that's a real limit in terms of making this feel like a, a big connected waterfront. Um, so as you can see also, we're, we've introduced the idea of perpendicular parking, um, so that, or angled parking, front angle, although our transportation engineer would love to sell you on back in, back in angle, um, but we won't talk about that today. Um, front angle, um, because that will give us more capacity for cars to park. Um, so if we, as we take cars away, perhaps from the south parking lot, we're finding new places to put those those parking spots. Um, the docks I spoke to a little bit in terms of large, more capacity and parking for larger vehicles. I'm just going to pause and just make sure everyone can see the screen well enough. Or do you want me to zoom in as I come to different images? Are we all good? I think you could zoom in a little bit. Yeah, that would help. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so here is um, a 3D model. I'm not a Mac user, so bear with me as I... <laughs> yeah, so above was the, the diagonal parking on Lakeview Drive. You can see the, the boardwalk. Um, and you can see here in the image also the idea of having safe crossings to get to additional parking on the north side of Lakeview Drive. All of these efforts will slow down traffic as well. 
The docks I already spoke to a little bit. Um, the idea is the undulating boardwalk that comes around Lakeview Drive, giving a wider pathway for pedestrians to sit and more places to sit, um, could culminate in this new dock system that allows for more capacity as well as some large to explore the idea of larger stalls for bigger boats there's an opportunity we're showing five but as demand is required the seasonal <coughs> kiosks they can be seasonal but in the winter if it's a winter activity you could see them also renting out things like cross-country skis or what have you um, just have a quick question on the docks. Yes. Are, those, are those conceived to be city run or privately run? You know, at this stage of the game, because the, the docks were city run, we just thought of them as an extension to that. And the master plan in the back end has a lots of ideas in terms of how you might um, spur on business. And if you know some of these could become uh, independent businesses taking them on. So for example, the kiosks, we envision them as being something that is um, provided by the city and leased out to businesses um, to help spur on some of that activity. However, there's obviously lots of models that can be provided where, you know, somebody could build, you can have a business person build these elements. Um, some of the, the idea of the business plan is to try to find um, ways to make the harbor front sustainable economically for the city. So whatever is the best avenue. So in one hand, um, owning some things that will bring money back into helping pay for these amenities that are not business, um, spin, have business, business um, money coming in. I, it's a way to help fund that through leasing property or through um, building them yourself and getting getting money from that. It's modeled, um, one model that we looked at was the Forks North Portage Partnership, which um, has a specific governance model. It's not the only one, but it is one that has worked well for them where they um, lease these things out. For example, um, their com the common in the Forks market, they own all of the restaurants equipment and they lease that out and they actually take a cut from um, their, from, from the money they make on it. So it's, it's just a different governance model. That's like a very evolved one and they baby step towards something like that. It didn't happen overnight. Um, but that's one model. Another model would be just to have a business person lease the land and take that on, you know. Um, so, Constantine, can yes. I just, sorry, Dan, I was trying to get your attention. Sorry, sure. Yeah. Um, can I just, uh, as we're talking about dockings and uh, docking and parking, um, and we're looking to expand our rental docking um, and expand docking for visitors, are we taking into consideration that we'll need additional parking? spots for uh, a back shore for the um, additional leased docking in the summer. So we, have we considered that? So right now after our CIT meeting, because at the time of this master plan, um, things have changed since then. At the master plan, um, it was more considered sort of day and overnight, mm -hmm. le um, more casual. And at our CIT meeting with with staff, they have brought up that very same question of, you know, what is the mix? Do we want more monthly or do we want more casual? So we don't have the answer today because we're just embarking on a fact-finding mission such as that, you know, and that is being considered. And um, they, the city staff have been sort of, the, the people on that CIT are now going to study and explore and give us feedback and, and tell us what mix they want and we'll design for that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I think there is also some pressure taken off with the rec center uh, parking uh, lot program or design that we're doing right now. We're actually working on that as well with the park, the park, park group and um, yeah, just exploring additional sort of, you know, lease stalls for, for trailers and parks for more of a, a launching site. Because we all know that there is um, um, a lack of um, 
uh, dog barking in our community and that yeah. question is going to come up for sure. I think that's something where we, we're um, aware of and it's good to hear it from you as well. And so that's the kind of feedback we'd love to hear today because as I said, like the master plan was completed based on 2018. It was pre-pandemic. Mm -hmm. Things have changed. Things always change, but particularly now. So I'll make a note of it as well. Thank you, Sharon. Yeah, thank you. I should say Councillor Smith. No, you should not. Is that a, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not good with knowing what the no, protocols I'm, are. We're fine with that. Okay. Uh, I have one last question, Constantina, just on the docking, please. What's that? I said, you better, she says it's okay. I said, no, you're not calling me Councillor Smith. <laughs> <laughs> Once enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now tone it down, tone it down. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to sort of put on my, my new person hat. I, I hear two conflicting myths in the community. I hear that we don't have enough docking, and, then, and I hear that we have more docking than we need. I, I know depending on who you talk to. So I'm just interested, do we have numbers that are driving so at the time of the master plan, right. which was pre-pandemic, and also I know there's been some changes to the private ownership of yes. marinas around town, um, it has changed. At this okay. time, we had numbers. We, we worked with the city to get those, and we had come to the conclusion that it should be day and season, uh, sorry, casual parking, but maybe Perfect. looking at overnight and things like that. Okay. Um, but now we have to start over, not start over, but we have to look at that again. So we've only just launched the project, so we, we have tasked um, some of the staff at the city to provide us some of those numbers, and we're going to work with them to figure that out. Great, thank you. Thank you for the questions. Um, the next, the next um, item is the white cap improvements. The white cap improvements, um, there's a couple of things that we're looking at. One was um, we had reused unit pavers that were salvaged from harbor front to, to build the, the flooring in there. It looks like things have settled. Um, I know that the city has spent money re-leveling them. So the civil engineer, there's also a drainage challenge. Um, I think water during high level does not allow water to get out of the tent because the outlet is, is in the water rather than above. So there's a few things that we've already um, investigated and was part of the master plan in our discussions through workshops is to try to, first of all, improve the flooring in the white cap, that's part of our construction drawings, and solve the drainage problem as part of our uh, job. As well, though, um, we found in our study of the harbor front that the tensile structure um, has not been utilized to its fullest, that it's, it's empty a lot of time, and that um, we need to provide, in the master plan we provided ideas, we sat with your, your, your <coughs> tourism group and we came up with a, a list of ideas that could happen under the tent to program it. To do that, they'll need a few extra things to help outfit it. Things like, as you can see, you know, uh, poles, temp removable poles to put up a basketball net. I know that in the summer, I'm a seasonal resident, as most of you know, and um, I come down and it's, it's empty. And I think I have two boys, teenage boys, and I was thinking, gee, you know, in the summer, this is a great place, like a drop-in, you know, for, for kids of Kenora do something midweek. So things like that, a movie night, um, you know, um, more dances, so finding appropriate flo flooring for powwows. I'm, sh I'm showing a picture at Odena at the Forks. Um, you know, dance nights, like the fourth image at the Forks again. You know, there is um, ways to get this thing program. We have an amazing uh, investment on the harbor front, so that should be one of the first things we do, is make sure that this is fully utilized. So that's what we're, we're exploring, is what kinds of things can we add, accessories, let's call them, as well as fixing the drainage problem. Um, now we're kind of moving into, um, here's a good blow up of the tensile structure as it exists, and I'm going to guess that the next project we're going to talk about is in this area. Um, the, the thing about the tent, as I mentioned, is once we put this up, as you all know, this was a nice green park initially with a playground. And I'm going to just speak to these so I don't spend too much time um, presenting, but I'm just going to speak to these three items here, which is the um, 
a gathering area, an outdoor sitting area, and a play area. These things were sort of taken away when we built the tensile structure, and it was always the intent to put something back. So the master plan um, sees this area because this is where we put Lake of the Woods Plaza, which is our accessible access down to this, um, to the lakefront. This is actually, in my mind, is where we really need to um, make, in my opinion, the first phase. Um, we really need to focus on this area to create the critical mass of people coming here, the feeling of safety, inclusion, a variety of activities for various ages. And the way we proposed to do that was, first of all, uh, we, we provide a great opportunity for food trucks to come here, but not really great areas for people to sit. Sometimes under the tensile structure, first of all, there's no furniture under there, um, but also it is a place that's very shady and people would like to sit in the sun. So we felt that it would be important to look at the idea of providing outdoor seating and we've provided that here for this food truck. Today you see picnic tables sort of in, in, uh, in the swale that we constructed for drainage. So we need to formalize that and make it more attractive for people to gather. The other element here where the, the um, Thistle Pavilion, I remember this time, the Thistle Pavilion exists, which is a great um, place for washrooms. I know it's an info center, so it's got a lot of um, um, use. It's just become a little bit uh, decaying. It, you know, it's, it seems out of step with the, with the rest of Harbor Front. Um, it needs to be upgraded. And so we feel like also that it's taking up a lot of real estate that could be a lovely gathering place and this is where we thought we could really bring home um, the idea of having a place for indigenous people through our workshops with them they felt that they would like a gathering place for all peoples they would like to see a place where they could have a fire uh, pit for ceremony and for gathering for all people to use um, so this has been designed as sort of in concept as a gathering place um, and you can see this dark orange ring is actually washrooms. So washrooms and much needed storage for the white cap. So trying to reuse this space, um, the building uh, that's there today was built before the tensile structure went in and it was always in the hopes that we could upgrade that into a new, new, new project. So number 10 architects, um, uh, obviously are, are very accomplished architects. So they're working to, they'll be working on the washroom storage. Um, they also have an indigenous designer who is going to help us with taking what the First Nations in Kenora <coughs> tell us this should look like and trying to resolve that into a detailed design for this gathering place. Um, the concept, came out of, like I said, um, people really wanting a central focus for the Métis and Anishinaabe people in the area. And we pictured this as this really beautiful trellis area that could have some interpretation and could be, um, in the winter you can imagine, this would be a lovely place with the fire, um, which is something that's really missing from Harbor Front today. It's, as you probably, you guys, I, I was to, said this at the CIT, I was like, everyone in Winnipeg has bought a fire pit this year. I bet you guys did too. And, and I was told, no, everyone in Kenora has always had a fire pit. <laughs> Get on board, Winnipeg. Um, so we just thought this would be a, a lovely opportunity to do it here. It's, it's central focus and gives a little more life to this area with the seating and the gathering. Um, and you can see outdoor events happening here as well. And just, and to play off um, the idea of that this was a park before we put the tensile structure up, is starting to, to introduce more tree, sorry, more trees to the harbor front and having um, the, the drainage that was in a swale. Here, I'm gonna just go down to some pictures. Um, Oh, here's a better image. Here's a 3D of what we're talking about. You can see the tensile structure with this gathering area with a fire node and, and seating area. And then beyond is this forested area, which we've been told that it can't be a forest for safety. So let's just say a treed area. It would be a park that has um, interpretation uh, about the lake it can have, um, oh, I thought I had some precedent images. I apologize, hold on. Um, I thought they were in the document. I am wrong. They, they're somewhere. 
Okay, I'm just gonna keep going because I think there's some really evocative imagery that we found. The forest, oh, here it is, I jumped ahead, I guess. Um, taking that in terms of sustainability, you know, and taking that swale that goes through today and, and making it, naturalizing it, and not having it just a, a mown, sodded swale, but start to put native plants in here and maybe some nature play. We've been doing lots of fabulous nature play grounds um, around Canada, and they've been very successful. Um, so just for some evocativeness, I'll go back and talk a little bit about the pier now. The pier is something that has been, um, something that was in the master plan that actually our office did in 2004 based on workshops. And funny enough, we came with tabula rasa with no pier on our drawings. And what did everyone do? But they drew a pier on the drawings. <laughs> and I went, okay, the pier is back. So um, we really explored this idea and took it to a new level though. We, we thought, by doing the pier, um, as I mentioned, we don't have a lot of land. So building out provides us an opportunity for more kiosks. Market Days in the white cap has said they wanna grow. Um, the, the pier allows for a place to grow and not only just to grow on Wednesdays where you have your peak parking problem, which is the only time you have a parking problem, by the way, um, but it allows you to have uh, a market on a smaller scale seven days a week or six days a week, whatever works, you know, so that um, you may not want the intensity of the market days that you see Wednesdays, but at least people can come to Harborfront and there be some market element there. Um, it could be food, it can be, um, it can be um, crafts, it can be business people trying out their wares on a smaller scale. I mean, it can be a multiple of things. Um, the pier also allows us to park the MS Kenora away from, from the shoreline, which would allow in future phases to do other things with that shoreline, and I'll tell you about that a bit in a minute. Um, but additional seating area, more activities, um, the pier becomes a place that we can actually see some business development. But we wanted to tie a few more things to it. Um, and in the workshops, we talked about year-round activities and we went back to the Forks model and how successful the Common is. And the Common is an interesting model and it's not just done there because now there's, since we did this, um, um, True North opened their Hargrave market. And this is a model that you can find across Canada and the US and in coming from other countries, which is the idea of, you know, and not, this is not part of our construction drawings, um, but number 10 is on our project so that if you, if we wanna have this in the future, we can make sure that we're planning for it appropriately and not cutting it off so that it can happen or not in the future. And that the resto bar isn't part of our plan, but it was intended to be sort of like the common. And similar to our grape market, if you're familiar with it, there is, um, there is a restaurant, for example, called, um, Pizzeria Gusto and it's on Academy and they have put a little pop-up restaurant at the at Hargrave Market called Gusto North. So the idea is this is an eatery that could have smaller versions of the restaurants that you already have in Kenora. So the brew pub, Cornerstone, they can have a smaller fare in this eatery place but it's mainly um, a, a restaurant eatery with a bar and um, the idea was that the Forks owns the bar at um, and what they do is they make money out of that bar and it helps pay for the amenities on Harborfront. That is one concept that we put forward. The other concepts it would be that a restaurateur comes in here and they lease that space out and that's another way to make money that goes towards the amenities of Harborfront. But that is a future concept. However, the idea of the common and that um, the, the other amazing thing that the Forks has done is they have been able to work with um, the Manitoba Liquor Commission and have um, groundbreakingly allowed for drinking all over a certain portion of the Forks. And it's outdoors and indoors. So in outdoors, all they need is a planter with a sign that says, 
no alcohol further than this location. And it's not that everybody needs to drink, but just having that feeling of a beverage, be it you know a soft drink for your kid or yourself and or somebody wants a drink, and that you can walk around this whole pier and possibly the boardwalk um, and enjoy yourself and sit out just like they do at the Forks. At the Forks, they have fire pits and they have seating and it is packed. And um, before something like a resto bar is chipped off, there's a way to test this out. And it's one of the ideas for this kiosk could be uh, a test of this idea. A kiosk that, that sells food, kiosks that sell liquor, others that sell other refreshments, and that we can section this off as a place that people can sit out and enjoy a drink on the lakefront. Um, the other idea that came out of the workshops, and I promise you it wasn't my idea, but I loved it, was as winter use, the idea of a sauna. Um, you guys have um, a lot of Norwegian roots in Kenora, and the sauna has become very popular across Canada and, and in terms of extending usage of places over the winter. And um, so that is not also not part of our phase, but it is important to mention as one of the things that sort of makes the pier um, sing. It gives the pier more reason for being is these additional sort of business ideas that can be tacked onto them. Um, the, there is also the idea of a pool. Um, here's some, sorry, here's some lighting for the pier. Um, that Some precedent images of that. Uh, an example of a resto bar that's just in Winnipeg that's on the water. Um, and then here's the, some, some examples of lake pools. Everybody at our workshop said they wanted to swim at harbor front that was one of the things they wanted to do um, the problem with the harbor front is that it was filled in and it's very deep and so there's no way to create a beach entrance as people were hoping because the the bathymetrics show us that it's quite steep as you enter the water however this we're in lake country we're in dock country so this is a bit large this is a bit large scale for Kenora. But the idea of having some sort of dock, um, we kind of went full bore and, and did you know a larger type of facility, but just the idea of having some sort of ability to go swimming on harbor front. And with the new washrooms potentially and, um, and, and all of that, there's opportunity to, to provide those amenities. And that's the way we sort of responded to the swimming idea, because I, I think there's other places that have beaches in Kenora that are appropriate. Um, we wouldn't be able to construct one here. And here's just a fun image of a sauna idea. Um, the forest we talked already about, um, a future phase similar to the resto bar and, and pool and sauna idea is the idea of an interpretive center um, as a future phase. We've taken away the uh, Thistle Pavilion in the master plan as sort of a building that will age out very shortly and so what do we do do we put the same thing back we found something we felt was was a better um, anchor for that spot and for for um, the harbor front we thought it would be a wonderful idea to have an interpretive center um, a lot of people felt that um, it would be a great location for visitors to come and learn about the lake ecology to learn about the history of Kenora to learn about the Anishinaabe and Métis people we haven't nailed down exactly what this building um, houses, but there was lots of ideas um, and people felt that they wanted to see more four season facilities, somewhere to have a wedding or a banquet on the lakefront. They wanted to see a multi-use building. The way we envisioned it, however, would be that it would be a completely green building, that it would be net zero, that it would have infiltration ponds, you know, roof drainage and infiltration um, cells um, so that all you know that it would that it would have a zero footprint and explore um, there's you know the idea of sustainable building there's also beside it the idea of an additional skating rink we you guys already have a skating rink that you establish under the tensile structure some winters we understand you can have skating on the lake but not always and the idea of having similar to the forks where they have multiple skating rinks and then skate trails that connect them so this this area was conceived as an outdoor uh, interpretive 
area that could be a splash pad for kids in the summer and in the winter it could be a skating rink it could be an outdoor gathering area as part of this common if we start to really buy into that idea that people can wander about this can be part of the common and in place of the MS Kenora parking here, we've extended the boardwalk. Today it's a very narrow little boardwalk, which is barely wide enough for a car to park. It's bumper over and you'd have crossed by. So trying to expand that boardwalk, provide seating along, additional seating so that people can spread out and enjoy and try to get that critical mass down here of activity. We've also explored this idea of touching, having different ways of touching the water. Um, it is shown and proven that successful waterfronts around the world have many elements tied to them. And one of them is to have lots of variety and activities, as you can see through this master plan, lots of things that people can do, um, as well as having different ways to interact with the water because you know the water and the lake is the thing. Um, the la this is not part, that was not part of our construction drawings, but just part of um, the master plan as a refresher. Um, I was gonna just move to this section, which is um, Bernier Drive One Earth, um, which is part of our explorations. And this, the One Earth is, um, we've constructed one in Winnipeg. Here's some pictures that I took in Germany um, right before the pandemic hit. And a One Earth is just a shared space with cars and vehicles, where um, at times you can bollard up and have events when you like, and at other times, um, it, the bollards are in place, the pedestrians kind of stay beyond, beyond the bollards and the cars pass through, but they tend to pass slower. Um, the idea was to explore um, the Werner um, in between, whoops, I think I want a bigger plan. Here, let me see, we jumped to the, the business plan, I apologize. Bear with me, we're on kind of the last development that's in this pro in our project. Um, the idea is between Lake, uh, Lake of the Woods Plaza, where we already have a table crossing, and up to an approach into an, a parking lot to the south, which is um, in, in step with the Water Street intersection construction drawings. The Water Street intersection construction drawings to meet grade, we need to have an access into this parking lot for the float planes and parking as far as this location. And we conceive that we understand that market days would like to expand. Um, this is another place that they can expand as well and put seasonal tents up. Um, and close the road during uh, the few hours that are open that they are open um, This is also a great place that if we have Harbor Fest and you want to have um, Similar to other large festivals where there's more than one um, Show going on at once you can have a smaller venue right here on the street and um, block it off this idea had been discussed for Main Street many years ago about creating a pedestrian environment for events um, I think it was found during yeah, the downtown revite that that didn't really work for trucks and um, cars but certainly Bernier Drive is the perfect location for something like that um, it could be bollard off during events and then the bollards taken off after the event, business as usual, you can still have parking on a One Earth. Um, you can still have cars on the One Earth. It just allows um, pedestrians to feel uh, more seamless during events with this whole, whole farber, harbor front. And knowing that a lot of these have been, and I believe will be, restaurants and retail on the main floor as you build your harbor front these main floor um, businesses will want to become part of this harbor front, sort of planning for that seamlessness with the harbor, with the water and um, people being able to, to walk across here without curves and those kinds of impediments and making it fully accessible. Um, the last item, which is not part of our project, was another business development idea where we found some land where a condominium or boutique hotel um, could be uh, land could be sold off or leased out. Um, there's many, many more ideas such as fitness circles and uh, circuits and um, 
you know, ideas of how to bring active transportation here, about land shuttles and water shuttles. A whole bunch of ideas came out of that extensive um, workshop with, um, with people. Here's a winter view as well of how we could make it exciting during the winter. Um, we actually spaced all our docks to allow for setting up hockey rinks and, and snow sculptures and skating so that, and fire pits so that you can have more of a winter use of your harbor front as well. Um, so that was the master plan in 2018. And as I mentioned, since then, we've already met with CIT, the, the city implementation, implementation team, and we've learned lots of things since that. And so the master plan is high level. It's similar to the 2004 master plan we did, um, which was very high level. And if you look at the drawings that we did for the master plan and actually look at the construction drawings that we did, the tender drawings that they, we've been hired to do, um, they look different. Um, they are in the same general zones. They have the same flavor, but they evolve with additional discussions with mayor and council with city staff and experts in your roads department, in your parks department, in your tourism department, as part of our process um, for the next stages to get to construction, to complete construction drawings, we have planned many touch points with your city staff. Um, we have um, included in our proposal, which was accepted, to meet with First Nations to take these initial seeds of ideas and make sure they're in keeping with of what they think is appropriate as we detail it. And as I mentioned, we, we may ensure that we have an Indigenous designer on our team to do that respectfully. Um, we um, are going to have public engagement again. We, we promised the public last time, we've planned to meet with them once we get through design development and you are all happy with where we're at, where this project evolves. And then there'll also be a finally, final open house to show them what the final resolution is for the projects <coughs> that we had been hired to do, which is most of the zones apart from the mostly the buildings. So not the resto bar, not the sauna and pool, not the interpretive center, but the washroom facility, the new washroom facility to replace the, the current building, which is aging out. So that's the master plan. And that's um, how, we, how we moved from the 2004 to building. I've been lucky enough to have been involved, not at the master plan stage, because I wasn't with our office at the time, but our office did the master plan. And I've been lucky to see um, Kenora evolve, because when I joined, we were building Main Street in the, the roundabout. And came, that came from the master plan. The master plan showed a roundabout and we built one. And we, we showed Main Street having broader sidewalks and pedestrian state safety and we built it. You built it, we designed it, you guys built it, you paid for it. But I mean, you, you, these guys are finding money to support this stuff, so I'm very excited and very positive, but we want all of this stuff to be based in reality. And similar to those projects, they evolve through the process. So we're just at the start of the project, and today I'm really hoping that I can hear from you guys. We can talk about the overall, some of your overall feelings about the project in terms of the master plan and things that have happened since. What's new? What's changed for Kenora? What's, what doesn't seem in step anymore with what you guys want to see for the harbor front? And then what I did with the CIT is we went zone to zone. So we started at McLeod Park. We opened up the drawings. I brought drawings today. We can put the mass, we can have it on screen as well. And we'll lay out a drawing somewhere. And we can walk zone to zone. And I will write copious notes and answer your questions. And we can talk about your hopes and wishes and what things you're concerned about. And uh, those will be my marching steps to our team, which I didn't mention, I should have, is includes KGS Engineering, who actually built the harbor front uh, and Main Street with HTFC. So KGS and us, we have a long history together of building things. So um, also on our team, as mentioned, was number 10 architects, um, who will be looking at the building component, which is the washroom and storage for the structure, for the tensile structure. Um, and who else is on our team? Well, KGS brings quite an envelope of professionals. They bring structural engineers, municipal engineers, transportation engineers, water resources engineers, which is to do with the marine technology for this pier. 
Um, we also have biologists, environmentalists, environmental engineers on our team. I'm probably missing somebody, but we've got a really full slate of people to make sure that this project is um, done properly. And that's my presentation. I, does anybody have any general questions before we go into the sort I'll, of workshop I'll part? just make some positive comments. Um, oh, good. <laughs> I like positive, but I'll take both. Part of the issue we have is we're trying to visualize what it's going to look like. So I've been fortunate to, um, you know, go to Halifax twice in the last few years right and be in Victoria for, and so when I, you talk about, you showed the steps coming down into the water, that was a huge thing that they just, re, at least it wasn't there four years ago, it was there two years ago in Halifax, oh. where along the harbor front, and I think they built a big hotel or apartment condos behind it, but it just allowed people to, you know, sit, have lunch, feet can touch the water, and it was very, very active. Um, the, what McLeod, or the, the rotary geyser could become, I flipped everybody, hopefully, I don't know if it went through, but it's from Future Future Gardens in Victoria. And it just, it, it kind of, it's on a program and it, you know, it does amazing things and then they can put lights <coughs> in for the evening. And the other thing was down on the, um, the main thoroughfare, Dolls Road, which is one of the busiest streets in, in, um, in Victoria, they narrowed the road because they, they added bike trails and they added running trails and they, they changed the path. And so it slowed down the traffic, but, and that's what made me think, and you showed it in your drawings, is at McLeod Park, and at the, we have this little parking lot where they put pedestrian walkways across, and it really, it's, it slowed down the, pro the, the traffic, but it really made it flow really well. So I, I'm seeing a lot of things I've seen work in other areas being proposed in this plan, and though I'm not going to jump out of my seat and like Megan, where she was so excited when she, I don't even think you stopped for sentences there. You just, you were so excited. I, I see the potential here. And uh, so I'm excited to hear as we move forward the rest of the, the morning and early afternoon. So, uh, Councillor Van Wallingham. Yeah, just a couple of quick things. I found it interesting your part on safety and security in the harbor front because we're looking at some major changes there now with different staffing and stuff so we could work together with that. But uh, I wonder if it came up at all a number of years ago we did that intersection at Water Street coming out, it's millions of dollars to change that. And they looked at coming through the, uh, the park there, extending 3rd Street and having one lane and move the cenotaph and having a Water Street locked off there and move the cenotaph there and be a one lane over right from the courthouse who would just extend on third street. Yes. And, uh, Is that a question? Sorry if we'd looked at it. Did you look at that? So, um, I'll tell, uh, so what we did is I actually worked on the Water Street Intersection project. I'm so embedded in your community. community. <laughs> and um, the big debate is and was, you know, can we get move the cenotaph? And every time that comes up, historically, people are outraged. Um, people are really tied to that cenotaph in that location. Um, so um, it was explored, and it can be done if we would be allowed to move the cenotaph. So that's, that's the biggest thing. That's the biggest hurdle there. Um, there is the Water Street intersection, um, however, would be a bigger intersection than what we can um, physically fit between the museum and the new art gallery. Um, it is a little bit tighter in there, and so, in truth, if if it's the only way we can get people through economically, then let's do that. But um, if if we if there's monies for things like a Water Street intersection from infrastructure coming down the pike, um, that is going to give you a lot a lot more um, mobility for trucks and things. So I just want to I just want to dig in on that a little bit more. Sure. So I, I understand that there's a vision of that intersection that has nothing to do with the cenotaph. Um, 
that's that's my understanding from staff internally that Sorry, that we that we again? we've explored um, drawing drawing an intersection f from Bernier Drive. There's there's sort of a, a hill there and, and yeah. some rock. It's my understanding that there's a version of that project that has nothing to do with the cenotaph that would that would just see us regrading. Yes, yeah, so is that accurate? Is, this and is, this yeah. Is and I understand, just for, just for councils, just to jog council's memory, I understand that there's this mythic list that we have called deleted projects. Is that right, Heather? So I, I, understand, that, I understand that council has considered this concept before and it's sort of been shuffled to the deleted project list, which I, I've never seen that. Maybe one day I'll see it. Um, but so thank you for bringing up the question, Councillor Van Wellingham, because it was an option that we did want to have a conversation with council. We weren't quite ready there yet but it is something that we need to be having as part of the conversation around this project. So, um, yeah, and I should yeah. I should say, Kyle, because I think I misrepresented something, and that okay. is, um, in our drawings when we did this concept, we ensured that this whole master plan works with the Water Street intersection yes. and without one. Yes. So, uh, it, but we showed in our drawings the <clears throat> intersection. It was just chosen to to show it with but it can be shown without as well. For, for sure, well, for my clarification, w was that this council that considered that? Uh, or was I was just gonna ask whether it was yeah. the end of last one or yeah. the start of this one, but we did have a healthy debate about it. And mm -hmm. We're at the point where we, we did run into a lot of problems. We were gonna need to divert traffic while they did it. Yes. And we got a lot of opposition from diverting it through that area. And that was before the gallery was built. Yes. So okay. it's even narrower now. Councillor McMillan. Yeah, thank you. Question, uh, thanks for the update. Um, it's nice to be refreshed. I, I continue to remain excited about the possibilities here. Um, back when it started, and I think, um, Morton, you were a strong advocate uh, on some of these events. Just a couple of points, and I, I believe you got them covered, so you can stop me. But um, the way it's set up, and, and you've got the trees and uh, the sensitivity to the water with the uh, sidewalks and uh, walkways, we're in the process of completing a sustainability action plan, which, uh, <coughs> excuse me, which addresses some of the environmental components, uh, and, and with uh, the concern with climate change or climate breakdown, I think that's, and I'll leave that with Adam, but that's a document that maybe you could look at, and I think you've got many of those elements. Um, very pleased to see with the number of elements uh, with the Indigenous culture that are integrated uh, into it. And I think when, when you're talking about the uh, tugboats and the uh, braiding with the, the pulp and paper history, I think there's another element that maybe can be blended in that too, and that's um, uh, the, Indi the indigenous water routes uh, coming from the communities around the water and to the different rest areas I think that would be um, add to the uh, history of it. And one, probably a way out there, when I, I just thought about it when I looked at the uh, replacement of the Thistle Pavilion uh, with the circular pavilion and the uh, top on there. Is there any remote possibility, for example, I thought in the summertime for wedding ceremonies, not not the receptions, but the wedding ceremonies, the potential of that and the, and the view and the viewing area. And I also thought uh, maybe some small events could take place there if it was built strong enough because it's just a beautiful spot. Uh, let me see with my notes. No, I, I think that's it. And, and as we do develop our new strike plan, I think they'll, they'll blend quite well together, so I, uh, I remain excited. Thank you. All right, Constantine, did you have something, Councillor Smith? Yeah, I just, um, I haven't got to the end of the document yet, but I thought I saw a um, chart where you phased in and possibly, um, you know, staging some of the construction and maybe costs associated with that. Um, did I miss that or? Uh, no, I, I guess um, it's in the document. Uh, we didn't, I, I didn't want to take up too much time presenting, but we can definitely look at that. 
Um, is the goal today not to hear and then get a chance for input as opposed to getting into the fine detail? No, I just want to know what, it, when you talk about, I thought we were talking about the Husky walk here being phase one, um, perhaps to start this summer. And when I look at those kind of timelines for the project, I think that's kind of like a tight squeeze. So we've been asked um, in the proposal call, we were asked to um, have construction drawings completed in end of February for McLeod Park only. And the rest of the construction drawings will be, are, are due due to funding arrangements um, December 2022. So really just McLeod Park we need to get finished. Um, the construction drawings based on timelines and the rest of it will have the full year to complete. Um, those are not implementation dates. I imagine Megan would m maybe like to speak to that. That's probably more based on you'll have shovel ready drawings and it will depend on where the funding comes from and where and what and how much. That'll drive phasing. So for example, there may be a lot of money out there in the short while from the governments for green infrastructure. We probably know there is, you know, um, so that might push forward projects related to green infrastructure. Does that helpful? Yeah, Antoinette? and I can add a little bit more information to that. So as we had, you know, applied for the detailed design project back in 2020, there had been some new opportunities that came up as you know part of this COVID-19 recovery fund so we're almost running like parallel processes right now so we had applied for the detailed design um, funding we were waiting for a decision on that but then in the interim we had also seen an opportunity to apply for funding through it was like I think um, the CCRF and I, I apologize I can't remember community capital relief fund or something like that um, but we, we thought, okay, maybe we could be in a position if we can start the detailed design work in the fall, um, maybe we could actually be in a position to undertake some capital work in 2022. And so um, we were lucky to receive a decision on the detailed design work. And um, so that's allowed us to start this project now. And we applied for uh, McLeod Park and work at Husky the Muskie, so a refurbishment of Husky the Muskie through that funding program. And um, basically all we're trying to do is like get our ducks in a row so that, you know, if and when we get a positive decision from this funding program, we will be ready to proceed with 2022 construction. And why that's important is because it's just the terms and conditions of the program. Like they're um, only allowing one construction season for work to be completed. So you have to have everything done by March 31st, 23. So we understand it's a bit of a tight timeline, but things seem to be lining up so far. So um, that is why McLeod Park remains the number one priority to complete the detailed design work right now. And then hopefully we'll receive a decision on our, our funding submission soon. And that will allow us to, to move ahead with capital construction in 2022 there. So if you're phasing in the project, you have year one, how many years do you think this um, the total project. I think it's I think it's a really important question, Councillor Smith. And so, just uh, as we go into the capital budget, you're going to see the McLeod Park project is going to be, um, you know, in 2022. And then we've we've staged it out over in the five-year capital budget. So you'll get a chance to see that uh, on December 3rd, and you'll get it. We'll get a chance to have a conversation on it. It's an interesting conversation about trade-offs, right? We're trying to minimize the amount of time there's construction down on the harbor front. We're trying to maximize those funding opportunities, um, trying to make sure that the harbor front is still a place that people can go and enjoy, um, you know, in parallel to the construction happening. So I think there's an opportunity for us to have that conversation in more depth um, on December 3rd. You know, nothing's set in stone yet, but there is a certain element, like Megan said, we need to be sort of planning in 2022 for 23 and 24 so there's a lot of multiple processes that we need to sort of keep in mind and, and so I think we can have a really fruitful conversation on that at capital budget um, unless Adam or Megan have any other details they'd like to nothing set in stone that's a decision that'll come for council 
Yeah, no, I, I think I just reiterate uh, Kyle's comments there and uh, add that uh, and you'll see the, the building's components as well. Um, a lot of the rationale behind excluding that from this scope of work was primarily driven by uh, looking at, you know, in the phasing out and building codes change as well as design. So making sure that as well as being the, the different funding uh, sources that may be able to um, uh, drive those initiatives. So for example, if you look at the water pavilion, well, that might be a good fit for an SCM pot of money tied to doing a net uh, zero um, type of building. Um, so we're trying to structure it in a way which we maximize the, uh, the external dollars to what that could be available, but also looking at uh, um, just being reflective of some of the distinctions between the civil work and facilities which have uh, different characteristics. So. So Constantina, can, can you just tee up for us again? What, what are you looking for today? What do you need from council so, today? So what I was hoping is to mm -hmm. talk about, oh, I was hoping I have a large plan or we can just use this plan. I have a large plan I can put on the floor even. Um, I was hoping to just get comments regarding each of the zones that we are doing detailed design for and um, just get some general uh, feedback in terms of if there's something that we should know that we should consider while we're detailing it at this stage um, and if there's things that have changed or things that you'd like to see different or, or be aware of. So just a little round table about each zone. So we can commence that. I was, I was thinking there was gonna be a table in the middle. Are we okay with just me zooming in on the part of the plan that we'll talk about? That's up to Councillor. We can move this coffee stuff around and we can roll out some blueprints there. How would you go? There's a big table there. Just that, that was the intent yeah. is to put it on that big table there. Oh, right here? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. People are just gonna kind of Perfect. that council yeah. And I, table. Yeah, and I, you know, we can still, there's lots of meat in the um, in the master plan that we didn't discuss today that is going to take time. So I welcome you know, Councillor Jays. I don't know if you've had a chance to read it, but have, yeah. th there's a lot of things in there that we did not sure. even discuss <laughs> because try to keep. I'd love to have ten hours of everyone's time, but mm -hmm. that's okay. The So we could all stay and just. Move that, but it's not, very good. It's not we large enough. Table? Have to it up, no? Are there, is, we have to read the book. No, it's just the mic. How oh. difficult is it to move my desk into the middle? I was just as easy as that. Right. We can pull Andrew's back. Andrew can pull yours back because Kyle's is easy to move. Oh, okay. That way we can all. Gives Constantine a chance to move no, around. Okay, right. I'll do and we all because see it. All yeah, yeah, it does help because everyone's looking at it yeah. together. That's up. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Yeah. Thank you. I just wanted to sure watch and work here and then just sit at their desk. Nope. Yep. You got the first show. So this is that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Which is exciting times, Kyle. Exciting times. Which page we're on? Twenty-one. Wait. I brought. 
I brought the master plan here. If anybody wanted to go through it, um, we can go through it and the proposal too, just because it does some nice imagery. And so, me again, I won't uh, take notes and we'll Yeah, I can make sure you're All right. So, who, is everyone here? Who needs to be here? Where's Andrew? Who's Andrew? He's not here. Oh, there you are. Okay, yeah. so I'm going to suggest that we start, because um, this might be the easiest way to go about it, is just to start as a cloud park, which is the one we're working on um, more feverishly right now. Um, I'll tell you some of the things that we found in looking at it. In the, in the master plan, of course, you don't get a chance to look at things in detail, but there is some steep slopes on the walkways. And that sort of thing. So we found them to be quite steep, steeper than I thought. So there's going to need to be, for McLeod Park, really accessibility will be an important thing. Um, and as we discussed, I think the idea of navigation and the river, I think that's really an interesting, I think it was in the master plan, and then we kind of got in our safety chart, talked a lot about the town of and logging, but there's a way to bring both those stories here. Um, the idea here, as you can see, was to have maybe this this walk on this side, and these are just staff doors. It feels like a, a, a like a, a a mechanical building. It doesn't feel like a washroom. So we're going to try to make this appear more welcoming. So it's still the base. You're it's, use it's, we're not touching the building okay. except to maybe add some attractive trellis. We have some really fun ideas. I won't reveal yet. We're still developing them. But like fun ideas to really, as you're coming over this bridge, you really notice that more than you do today. Because right now, it really does look like a mechanical binder. So we wanted it to be, it's a washroom. It's great to have washrooms there. And I wish it they look fine to me. So I just think it needs to feel a little more welcoming, a little more exciting as you come over. And as I said, the elements to you know, building a great waterfront is to provide lots of things for people to do. And so we're going to make sure that there's more to do than just the tugboat, that we're going to build on that. Is there anything to do with that boat that's parked there? Because there's a, yeah, there's a, the, the, the tugboat. The that's the tugboat. Also. Yeah, so the tugboat it's was pulled. It's staying there. It's staying there, but we'll just, we're going to work around it. And actually, having one out there, the decking needs replacing. Mm -hmm. it, needs, it needs some upgrading. But rather than just um, upgrading, we're going to give it more life. It's actually a really cool thing to look at. It just doesn't have enough around it to really attract people and, and get them going here. I mean, um, having opportunities to sit, picnic tables, that kind of thing. And so any thoughts or comments about that vision? Does it involve, like is it, or is the site remain as it is, or are you cutting into hills to expand it? Um, what, um, you know, like you had a tiered. Yeah, so the idea of this tiered sitting was just to provide more seating along this this existing hill. So it's looking it's towards the water? Yes. Okay. However, that is, I'll be honest, we've been sort of, we've been designing in the background since we did that first meeting with the CIT, and because of this walkway, which is shown wrong in our model, it's, it's a walkway that takes you down, and the walkway that's here are very steep. They're, they're not too, accessibility No, they're not really, and they don't flow well. No, and so we've actually changed the design quite a bit from the master plan already. Um, and of course, those, when we see change the design, um, you know, we're moving from a master plan to design development. That'll be shared with our project manager and her team, and they'll tell us if we're off, if we're off our rocker or keep forgetting that I'm being filmed, but you know, it's a classic way I talk. So. Um, yeah, so they'll let us know if we're going down the right path. They haven't even seen how we've evolved it, so um, it's a good place to talk to you guys about it. And um, like I said, we're bringing in the logging history. We're going to have some elements of play here, as well as picnic tables and trellis like we show. 
McLeod Park might not be the hardest, one, easy, easiest one to talk about because it's um, sort of isolated from everything else. We can move on from that one unless anybody has some. Um, There's not really a lot of changes. You no. Just clean well, it up and make, yeah, well, cleaning it up, providing seating, and having a little more interest. Okay. Building on that tugboat, you know, building on what. But it's something you can do mm -hmm. without impacting everything no like we busy want season this parking is so important we didn't want to touch it so going on to lakeview drive now as we discussed you can see we've added a parking lot so and we have a parking lot here as well and the problem is we really want similar to when people enter the roundabout and they slow down because it's a real pedestrian environment we feel that if you want to consider this whole thing up to Mosquito Muskie as your harbor front, the transition to being at the harbor front should happen here. That's when people should slow down. Some of there's some methods that we can do that the transportation engineer is going to work with us on, and that was and in the concept plan we also have an engineer. We the idea of adding a median sort of like if you I'm going to use your own city. So at the end of Second Street. Everyone comes barreling down the hill, down to Lake of the Woods, uh, the group hub. Remember, barreling down. We added a median. We put some banners in, and we put bump outs, and it slowed people down. And that was the worst intersection. We added some crosswalks and at appropriate places. By doing those things, you you force people to slow down. So as soon as people feel like they're getting squeezed, they slow down. So by slowing people down, we can now find safe places. Um, we're figuring out where this is. It's not going to happen exactly right here. We're working on where the safest place is with the engineer. However, in concept, we want people to be able to cross, clap, the traffic to slow down, and then be able to cross at the pertinent locations to get them to the parking lot safely. Um, we've also, by adding, as I said, like we, when we put the boardwalk in, we, we gained so much land that we could put this thing there, you know? So by doing that on the Lakeview Drive, which is very skinny amount of land, by, by be, being able to bring this walk away and going over the water, we now gain so much room to get some diagonal parking in here and really intensify the amount of parking that you can have along there. And that also will slow people down. Was there any, ever any consideration to just have the walkway over the water all the way? So the reason why we haven't done that is because um, every time we put a pipe into the water or a pier with fill, mm -hmm. we need to replace that habitat. So, and also because we're trying to be um, look at this in a sustainable manner. I didn't even get into all the sustainable features of this. We wanted to do the undulating also because we wanted to naturalize the banks in the areas and to provide... So is this a natural bank or will staff have to go over the boardwalk to maintain that in summer? They would, they would have to... Um, hopefully it's naturalized so they won't be cutting grass. We don't want to see this as sod. This okay. is rendered inappropriately to be messy you know, native plants and shrubs. Yes, mm -hmm. holding the bank. I'm just going Also, we felt that it's it's a nicer experience if you look at this image. You can see that if you do just the boardwalk continuous over, it's the same kind of view, you know, but the undulating boardwalk kind of creates different perspectives as you walk it. That's kind of the thinking. And also, we we be able to widen it in certain locations where we can have, this represents Bump house where people can, you can put yeah. benches or whatever, so and people can look up. And maybe there's sculpture, or something interesting mm -hmm. in each of those locations. So there's something to really like excite people and get them to walk this whole procession. So before we go, the only thing that has to be musky is, I think you could talk about docks. Well, so this, you could this area we had talked about docks, but we haven't. But I, I'm sorry, it was no. a floating dock, I think, is the way I've turned it. Yeah. So is that so people, what was the purpose of that? Well, was that the, people come off the lake, they can just park, walk up, get photos of us and musky? Sure. Or just, yeah. We don't want people parking, like, yes. sharing company with you and leaving their pool. Yeah. 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 I would <laughs> never do that. Well, <laughs> I think that um, in this state, in this phase of work, we're not looking at husky okay. musky at all. But, you know, um, 
maybe that's not the best idea. We're trying to find opportunities for people to interact with the water. A good idea that Tuskegee the Muskie is a tricky one because the paths are quite steep there too. It's not part of our project, but I think that's something that needs to be looked at in the future. Um, one of the things that we did propose that we're not doing is the idea of making this more interesting. You know, the, the, the geyser in the, like in the water, we think like with some, with very little money, it's not part of our, it's part of a master plan, so I'm allowed to talk about it, but it's not part of our, this phase. Adding a little bit of lighting, you know, at night, you know, you could see this being a lot more playful and interesting, but um, that's, a, that's a whole other, a whole other project. So if you were to maximize this whole shoreline, mm -hmm. that would keep the geese away. Yeah, and actually, um, geese don't like grasses. That's right. So you know, even if we if we were to put grasses in these back areas rather than um, sod, you know, you're going to have less geese. There's other ways to get rid of the geese too, but yeah, these are probably the most uh, effective without a lot of effort. Um, so this is, the idea. This is what I was talking about with the waterfalls. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Like you can just see how this could be a little more exciting. Yeah. Yeah. And if you had lights, like we had, you worked, obviously they, they've got the plan. But. We had worked with um, a company in Winnipeg when we did the master plan. It was quite funny because everything has been sort of talked about before. Because I called them and I said, "How much would it cost me to add some lights and excitement to this?" And they sent me a PDF from, I don't know when, 2003, for this, <laughs> that they had talked to somebody in the city about it. It was quite hilarious. And I was like, oh, okay, no new ideas. Just old ones coming up again that we didn't get to. Um, but this this was part, you know, this isn't part of our study now, but it should be something that you guys think about as a potential opportunity. Yeah. Um, so the boardwalk, the idea, so you sort of have this, at some point, you know, the beginning of this boardwalk that you could have a nice little node that starts you on this whole thing. And then the idea would be along here, some people felt like it would be really interesting to have fitness equipment so that there's a linear sort of fitness circuit that was in the master plan because somebody had brought it up. Um, is this the place for it or is there other ones in? Oh, well, sure, you know how we've got it at the Kingsman. Yeah, so other places, here, but they have it every. It, so it, as you're walking, yeah. you stop, it yeah. becomes an adventure more so you're just focusing on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's what people talked about. However, um, if maybe since this, those other facilities have gone in, we don't know. And they're not being, they're not being as used as much as possible. The intent, I, I, I was the one who brought that up, and my intent was, oh. to, was to talk about animating the harbor front. So you actually have people yes. doing something. Yes. And, and, and once you see people doing something, then there's more of, a, of a, I agree. an idea to, to join in or at least yeah, be and I there. Think there's an opportunity here being a linear thing to do something. So does a fitness circuit seem like a good idea or are we looking for something different? Well, I don't want anybody watching me exercise. Personally, I prefer after what I saw. There's more places for people to sit and yes. more you know, families to have yeah. right. picnics and, and mm -hmm. you know, you stop and read a book or I, agree. As a book. I, I think that would have much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and I think right now um, both those things are, are happening in this plan. Your, our intent was to be able to make it wide enough so that um, somebody could even get by a group mm -hmm. family with a stroller and a couple of people, and even a bike could get past them if they, if they wanted. We have to study the whole bike aspect still. I'm glad you okay, that. I was going to okay. ask, that was my question about so, that. So if this was Victoria, what they did was they built the sidewalk and they narrowed the road so when there's angle parking here, the bike path was in front of it. Yeah. So you didn't interact with mm -hmm. with the traffic. It was off the road. It was yeah, it was yeah. the parking was in between the bike path, running path, and the the and there was big transports because Dull's Road, that's where the shipping containers come in. So So they're still going up and which would be just like our transports that go through town. 
And then the parking is death, death to bike, bike to this side. Like, no matter way, how you cut it. But that's but why sure. Yeah, that's, that's why you move the bikes to the spot. Front. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I think that we need to have a consideration for a, a place for bikes to go for sure. This is my bike. So <laughs> what you're saying is the car, sorry, not great drawing here on this, but the bike is way bigger than the car, so we're privatizing them, so I scale, sorry. Mm -hmm. And then you're saying, and then the bike path, and then the pedestrians. We'll make them more to scale. Yeah. yeah. It's not a huge bike route anyway. Like no. It's not safe crossing a bridge on a bike. Yeah, this is so the, this is the issue right now. Yeah, so and, and and to be honest, so when we studied it, there was no formal bike paths in, 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 right in through our community. Yeah. We have there is there is they're pretty uh, quiet there. but there's quiet streets too and there's quite a few i know how long these are they're really long there's lots of room for a car to back up it's very comfortable to back up because we've made them so long which means a bike feels fairly comfy to come through there um so we did when we drew the section through this and that's what we're studying right now is you know although we know you're at a bottleneck here you know providing maybe a bike path on that north side that someday this could expand, or do we just bring bikes onto this boardwalk for more leisure riding? Because right. right? you have com you have two kinds of bikers, right? You have your commuters who are just going to want to be on the road. Mm -hmm. They're not going to want to. And then you have your more leisure family, maybe a kid on a tricycle, you know, that you know isn't going to want to be on the road. Mm -hmm. So um, and and preferred, even the commuters would like something like this. They don't they want to be separated from the vehicles. It's safer. So. We can take a look at that right of way and see the best way, but you're right, it kind of all ends here because they're, and, I, and we're going to study, actually it's one of our questions to the, the city implement, implementation team is what is, the, what are their thoughts in the future of this, you know, is there, is there ever going to be, you know, a bike path on that bridge? So in the case of that, then what um, cyclists in this community have learned to do is share those share the road yeah because we have never considered bike lanes or paved shoulders throughout the community now is the time to do it with every project because yeah. people are discouraged from riding for active transportation because we have not built that infrastructure in yeah so and it's, it's important when you're designing to yes do that. well and we're, that's what we're studying this is good timing because that's we're studying this cross-section right now to understand how we can fit all these things. Mm -hmm. And in the original design, we did have space for, for bikes, but we knew there was nowhere for them to go. But they, they do, they and do. so they share the road. Yes. 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 They learn to adapt it's to the dangerous wide, situations. It's that wide, Jenny, yeah. because I was asked to bring this up because people knew I was coming to this today. Yeah. It is right from there all the way to there. And even on Bernie Drive, an avid cycler in that, that is the worst. Yeah place this whole section here for cyclists and these are you know have it and I, I don't know how many there are but i i was i was contacted to bring that up that right from here and then you know yes. even provided uh ideas about like a like a boardwalk but it's caged yeah where it's, it extends out and then you go it, and i know that's kind of outside of the school off of the, hanging off of the bridge but right? if we're gonna look at that at some point and be serious about active transportation yeah. even if it isn't done right now but there's provisions in there to mm -hmm. do something at some point yeah and i think that this the outside of our study but um you know i'm not sure when this bridge will need replacing or you know that's a 20-year project you know what i mean you know well, what's the lifetime of this bridge do we know it's a lot longer than that it's it's going to be way out right so you know um understanding you know from a structural engineer if um you know if you can build something off of it or not you know i don't know structurally what you can do with that thing if there's anything that can be um done because a boardwalk uh across here obviously won't work but there is we did joke about not joke we talked about the fact that there is the old um abutments that would have held the previous bridge, I guess. Yes. And just the idea, you can see in the master plan, you know, everybody wanted a connection to Tunnel Island, um, which this is all low and marshy, so it would have to transition to like floating boardwalks. But 
you know, there was a lot of talk about how can, how can we how can we do that? A this lot is also of, private property. Yeah, yeah. Sure yes. which is for sale right now. So yeah, so it would be you know interesting to sure. to think about a pedestrian bridge or something like that in the future. But those are very expensive yeah. items. Yeah. And we're talking we're not talking a lot of people that use that. No, I'm just I was I, asked I, to, I just, yeah, yeah. to bring and it's it up. So. Uh, private property. It's a little further up than that, actually. Mm -hmm. isn't it? Well, that's the talking about. You guys, I think some of this is, is, yeah, is probably marshy city land, and then it becomes hydro. It's kind of a mix of ownership. I should look at that, but I don't remember. What's, like, this is our board, Mom. And this is our. Where is it going? Like, is this? Well, this is, oh, this is, yeah, this was all boardwalk, and then so this is like yeah. connecting so to that's the so existing that's pathways. Pathway. But so do, did we gain all this here because we're going to get rid of existing sidewalk and we're going to move all the walking lower, closer to the Pretty water? Pretty much, bit? yeah. Okay. And, and I think this needs a little more resolving when we were out no, there. No, that's fine. I was just trying yeah. to understand make that. sure that we yeah. realize that this is now those old sidewalks are gone, and that's how we gain Clean them up to goose work. <laughs> I think no, we're, we're, we're making it safer for parking. It is <laughs> I think yeah. that we will. But that's, if the thing with the geese is a bonus. We will, it certainly it's is. not the focus. I think what <laughs> we can do, you guys, though, is in terms of the AT, is as we look at this, we can explore how, rather than designing something that, if something changed here, and suddenly you have a way to get people across on a bike more safely, by adding, well, I don't think a lot of it, you know what I mean, like adding a, 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 you know, I'm not sure structurally how much they can do, but you've seen people do a little pant and provide, you know, some kind of space. We'll just make sure that there's room to accommodate them. That's and then, um, even though it dead ends, that's a future project, but at least it's there until, and there's, uh, so that's a good, good point to bring up. Why, um, why the engineer preferred so in the, their version come this way and back in a nice spot yeah so as opposed to just pulling in but then we, back we in went traffic in. is that a standard to do it the way he's recommending so so to be honest uh, nobody wants us ever to do a back in but it's actually safer it takes less room than front end um and it's safer because when you're establishing yourself into that parking spot, you're already on the road. You already stopped everyone. And then you back in, right? Yeah. And, and then when you leave, stop. your eyes are in front of you. It's like you so back in is actually a safer um, way to park, but people are not used to it. And in our workshops, we did bring it up during the master plan, and nobody wanted it. Um, I just went through this. Isn't that a roundabout discussion? I just went through. I know. I know. I went through this. Nobody ever used it. We just went through with this with another municipality, and I won't say who. And they completely kiboshed it because they just went, "Oh my goodness!" Like diagonal. You guys are used to diagonal. You have it on Main Street. Um, they didn't have any in their community, so even diagonal parking was a big deal front end. Mm -hmm. Um, it also, um, because of the fact that you are clear to go and you're establishing on the street, whereas when you're backing out, we always have a little room. You know, on Main Street, we provide Main Street. We provided a little extra room, so when you back on onto Main Street, you notice you have room to do that, right? You're not backing right onto the lane. You can see you need to have to physically provide more space for pull in and back out. Nobody's mm -hmm. ever seen me back up, Jack. <laughs> you know what? It's it's and they put it in front of our office on Valentine in the Exchange District in Winnipeg and at first everyone did it. But now, you know, like the roundabout people catch on. It is something that we can explore. Well I think some of the new for some people that are anxious about some of the newer vehicles with the technology on it too. Um, you know, oh, totally. I, I never had that, that rear for a while, the rear view camera. Yeah. Now I can't even believe how much I depend on it. Yeah. yeah. I drove my husband's car today and I was like, yeah, but like driving without that rear thing now. Is this the scale? Like, does that represent how many additional parking spots we Yes. Have? There's actually in the master plan account. So in the master plan, um, we we tried to balance out the parking we took 
with what we brought in, <coughs> to, plus taking into account the first street um, parking lot as well. And I'd have to look back in the numbers to find exactly what we did, but we did But anything the job. we would take away from here yeah. would be replaced by the new one and I have to double check. This well, is a great question. It would, be. it would help. <laughs> yeah, um, that's a great question. Um, I can't remember the exact numbers. I can flip through the book and look. No, that's after. okay. Um, but the intent was we did a parking study and we found that the issue wasn't finding parking. It, the issue was people wanting to find parking beside where they were, so that you have people who park here who work here, and um, so the the. The challenge with that, and the people who are on our steering committee, I know not everyone agrees with it, but you know, is that, well, if this is all monthly parking, how do visitors park? Are we making the visitors get confused and park somewhere else? You know, so do we want the parking for visitors or for the monthly parkers on parkers? You know, and so having enough for, for people who want to visit here as well as, you know, facilities. And perhaps these parking in the winter when this is less visited, you can you can give monthly parking parkers or stall back. Like maybe they park at First Street or the rec center during the summer time when it's busy and then they get their stall back. So there's different measures you can do. There's even talk about a shuttle that can bring people from That's, the rec center. That was my vision is uh, when's the last time we did that, Adam? Two years ago, Adam, with the market? Yeah, the market days. It was funny when we were doing this. On Wednesday. We said, oh, you guys should do a shuttle. And they said, we just started one, you know? So. Because, I'll give you an example. Yeah. With, um, because of uh, COVID. Yeah. <laughs> what would happen if we made this all summer long where there's no party and we put in work, like we, we talked about with the patios. You know, patios all down. Yep. And if you put, ran the shuttle six days a week or even seven, the rec center, and you pick six spots throughout. So you come over the, yeah. the hill and your first stop's at the brew pub, then you go around through the traffic circle at the mall, then you come down to, yes. you know, you come down, you stop here, and then you stop at the harbor front, and then you stop at the uh, cornerstone, and then you go back and it runs every 50. If you have a reliable <coughs> service, people will hop on, hop off, yeah. and it won't be as, like I think there's all kinds of opportunities there's, as we move forward. There's all kinds of opportunities as you move forward. And as you put more things here, like at first you won't need all those things. You won't have the critical mass yet. But as you're building, building, and you get to this, you'll have critical mass. That, you, that, that makes sense, you know? So it's baby steps. And actually, those 3Ds where we showed taking, taking a little bit of parking every time, you know, you guys are planning up to here, you know, so we're only taking a few stalls away. So you deal with that. And then then baby steps, you, you deal with, with the rest of it in the next phase. And it's baby steps. So the other thing with parking, yeah. and I'm not sure uh, if people recall, but the parkade, which is, unless something changes, is actually paid off now. Because we recruit our money, the city has. Yeah. Um, it was constructed to add, and I can't remember if it's one or two more, uh, or it was designed or engineered yeah. to add two more. I mean, it's right there. It's close to downtown, yeah. um, and you will get your money back. I mean, it's just it's a and gift. And you know, having a parking problem is a real gift. That means you're busy. Yeah. That's Great. good news. Yeah. And yeah. there is a place, I just happened to go there a lot because I had found, I never travel anymore, but when I did travel, I have family in Laguna Beach. Now, you guys, Laguna Beach is, was one of the precedents. It's a beautiful beach front with volleyball and all sorts of fun things on there. They have a parquet which during the, during the week, people have monthly. And then on the weekend, when it's very busy, those monthly parkers give up their stall and somebody goes in there and they take, you know, five bucks to come park for the day in the parkade. And the parkade is probably more hidden than this one. You know what I mean? And people learn to know where to find it. Now, I don't know what the arrangements are with that parkade, if monthly parkers would be willing to give up their stall on the weekend and then do casual during the weekend. You know, but that's just one idea of many ideas of how to deal with those things. Would there uh, still be able to have a car show along the green no. belt here? So the yes. idea was that when we did this, 
was that you could probably still do the car show. I mean, it's on a smaller scale. I'm not sure how many cars come into the car show, actually. 200. 200, yeah. So I don't think I have 200 stalls here. So that was one of the ideas that when we did this, they said, well, maybe that can happen somewhere else, you know, but, or it's, you know, you bring it and you put it along the street, but then you take away, because the car show happens during Harbor Front, right? Harbor Fest, right? Right, yeah. yeah. Just making sure if I forgot that one. So the idea would be that you kind of want those, that to be for people visiting Harbor Fest. And is there another way we could accommodate those cars at another location, you know? Um, otherwise, you would need the shuttle on, you know, doing a shuttle on special days like Harbor Fest. You could set up all the cars here, 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 alternatively, and have signs that say, park and ride for free. You know, and then they park at the rec center and people get shuttled. I keep using the rec center or the mall parking, an arrangement with the mall parking, which is always half empty. You know, that when you have parking that sits half empty, you know, that's what the parking uh, study found was that there is parking that's empty. And it's not even using private homes. You can have arrangements with private property such as the mall, but then. We really found on-street parking during the peak hours. We found available on-street parking ten minute walk from Harbor Front. So you know, it's. I mean, as this builds up, though, we'll need those kinds of solutions. Just like on a bomber, on a bomber game in Winnipeg, you will see those little picket signs that say "Park here five bucks," and it'll be the car dealership and the restaurant. Yeah, and it's just like other commercial. Uh, uh, re uh, restaurants and retail along along Pembina who get to make some money on farmer in the days. I mean, that's the kind of thinking that we need here. Can I, yeah. Can I do another parking? Yes, we should. I have a parking <laughs> comment to make up here before. Do you mind if I make my no, parking comment no, first? Right? So I love the idea of this little retail and go here and this, this docking. Yeah. I mean, maybe a location for a parkade though is here as well. If you're going to be renting out seasonal slips to people and having this retail node, this might be a good spot for parkade. For so. sure, and I think if all of this, as we said, is baby steps. Yeah. So the baby step is let's add a parking lot because it's way cheaper investment, and let's baby step. And then when we run out of parking in different places around the downtown, which I'm convinced we have room, mm -hmm. as long as we have relationships with private businesses who can then make money. Um, we can move into ideas like building a parquet here and that kind of thing. We are also looking at this land or getting a geotech study to see if, if this can come down and become additional parking. Is that that hill? Yeah. yeah. That, uh, there's a, there's yeah. a house foundation on yeah, it. Right. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're, so gonna, we're looking at that. My question would be to Megan. Can we get rid of those wooden signs? <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> can oh, the 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 no, I'm just asking. Can we build the CPR? Um, CPR I'm not too sure on that. I think they might be on CP property. Yeah, they are. Yes. So it would have to be a request that we make with CP. No, it has not be CP property. No, project. I don't have the property line so here, here, but it's kind of. We checked up already when we did the last year. Here's the program. They're doing their game. Well, in this area here. Was it going to be a You're kidding me. Yeah. And then yeah. there was the house. Yeah, yeah the foundation is up here. You're yeah. right. That was to be the uh, bishop. Uh, bishop's bishop's house. House. Yeah. And then there was a couple of years ago, there was a couple of yeah. houses. Yeah. My grandfather actually owned one of them and it was expropriated. When he did is that the, right? Uh, that was the car lot there. So, and there was another yeah. secure so now, house. Now we're going to, for the, because of time, we're going to move away from parking for a moment and Rory Just, wanted to yeah. go somewhere else for a minute. Very quickly, and I don't even know if it's realistic. When, when you look at, I was, when I relooked at the plan over the weekend, Look at this. Thank you for doing your homework. Uh, I think everybody did. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, is there a spot? Yeah. Is there an opportunity for a small amphitheater type of setup? Like we're talking, we're talking with Cloud Park, maybe a potential air. We're talking over here, we're attracting all these people here. Mm -hmm. You know, the walking, the biking. Well, what's, um, what kind of It's a small. For what, what to happen? The purpose of that? Yeah. The purpose that would be uh, focusing on local talent, summer talent, um, 
And many, what, many that's concerts, what you're something to that effect. But why would we use the tent? Well, that's fine. I, I just... You know, but I, the idea of buskers, you know, like the busker, yeah. you know, again, yeah. I'm sorry I'm using the forks, but I'm sure it's in Montreal, how it works, all of yeah. yeah. So yeah. those, Fox just Fox. so you know, like the forks and their buskers, they actually interview, like they mm -hmm. people have to apply to be a busker and they yeah. schedule them. So in terms of animation, that is one of the ideas, is to always have something and somebody organize it. But like buskers, they can they can enliven this space. Yeah. Like there's we don't need an amphitheater probably no. for smaller venues. We have a venue here, clear the tables. We've got a venue here. You know this this becomes a medium venue. The pier can become a venue. McLeod Park, like you say, could be a venue. The great thing is when you walk along, say the Forks, the river, you can see they have these little jut outs that become the stage. You know what I mean and. So we can we can do things like that for sure. I don't know. Yeah. 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 No, and the other. No, and this is a natural. If I'm anything, good. this is a natural yeah. amphitheater. I'm good with the response. And and the other thing, just to add to Rory, because we yeah. yeah I'm good with parking. Uh, there was a discussion about Main Street. That I mean, I I personally in that I I know maybe some businesses won't like it, but that piece of should be shut down all summer, and it should be or uh, pedestrian traffic. And if you go to Ottawa on Spark Street, uh, yeah. they went through the same thing and that where businesses were furious. But uh, what they found is someone driving in a car 30 or 40 kilometers an hour does not stop or look in the front window of that store. Yeah. But when you're on your feet, you do. You do. And they have busker festivals there. I mean, we spent a whole, we spent 12 hours on Spark Street one day. Is that right? Going from, you know, like uh, uh, kiosk to kiosk to yeah. kiosk to busker. Do you, like Halifax Harbor was the yeah. same way. But they just were everywhere along the. Yes. He means the there we go, right? No, he means here. No, on Main Street. Oh, but okay. I mean, you can't, because you can't throw everything into one, all these little areas. Uh, you kind of want to have critical mass. Mm -hmm. okay. And. And I like your idea, Andrew. It's just that that was explored with Main Street, and because we have to bring trucks through here, it was kind of thrown out. So in the revitalization, if you talk to the city staff here, they'd kill us. They'd be probably saying, well, where do you want me to bring the but delivery trucks? Yeah. We did it three times last time. Oh, sorry, to do it, sorry, to, right, do, it to do it periodically. But yes. we're only able to do that because the main traffic we could flow this way. Yeah. People came this way. I think yeah. that's more of a step once we get. Well, yeah, and I love what was happening here. I this summer when you saw, um, you know, people taking over some parking and putting out patios in the infill that you guys did with the. I mean, that's good stuff, and all that stuff should happen. Um, our role right now is to focus yeah. on this, and I don't think that this. That these two things can coexist. You know, you can do both of those. These, this definitely, we saw that coming alive. You know, where you take over the parking spot and you put up a patio. That a lot of people were talking about. It. I know that um, Hojo did it here on the boulevard parts right here. Um, but I think that's if that's the same idea. And the idea we didn't talk about here is having this refurbished too, so it becomes a nicer place to put tables and. So, so one of the things that was done in the original, in the, the first one, the big spruce, was it yes. was three, I think it's 60 amp services dropped along for events along Main Street. There's one here, okay. there's one down by Hojo's, and there's one up by the Ken Risha. They're there already. They're there in existence. I'm just wondering, is would there be any of that built into that area? Because if you're planning, like I'm talking festivals and busker festivals exactly. and stuff like that, you're going to need some power drops because that's essential. I agree. And I think that is definitely, I'll just put it down here, but um, I agree with you more. Like, so this idea will need all of that. Less than 100 feet apart. Yes. Okay. Because you, that's, that's generally, nobody wants to run their lighting wires or the power wires more than 100 feet. So that's the idea, is to provide that kind of service here and make it sort of, um, we create the critical mass here and then this is already happening, yep. you know. Um, and so those are those are great comments. Thank you. So one other comment that it was just on the docks, and I, I forgot to ask it earlier, sure. but all this development here is that um, is that just to bring people off the lake 
and bring them into all these activities, or is that for rental purposes, or a combination, or because we always people always tell us that there's not enough places to park if they're coming in mm -hmm. off the lake, mm -hmm. and if we have more activities, I'm assuming we're going to get more. Yes. Draw off the lake. At the time of the master plan, we felt we had heard that there was not enough parking for big boats. Yeah. And then um, I think I heard that at council actually. And then um, that there wasn't enough spots for people to come. There, these could be um, pay for use for sure, and that provides some money towards maintenance operations. It's not like a major money maker. The biggest idea was that we bring people, yeah. we give them some amenities they might need, and we draw them into right. coming in here and spending money. Yeah. And, and try to get people to come, have, have dinner, have lunch, yeah. you know, enjoy the harbor front. Yeah, my suggestion was not like long-term yeah. summer yeah. meet or yeah. rentals. More, was more, more casual. Yeah, yeah, like, you know, yes. even, like, if I come from Norman in my boat and I yeah. come to Kenora, a lot of times there was no place to park. Well, so this, you didn't yes. stop there. You went somewhere else up in the lake to eat or, or what have you. So, yeah, that's, it, you know. That was sort of the findings, but I think it was brought up earlier that um, we're going to, because those were based on 2018 demands, we're going to look at what the 2021 demands are with the team to see if there's a portion that's monthly and if there's a portion that's day, we'll, we'll explore that. And uh, But it's good to hear that you guys are feeling there, sh there is need for casual as well, not just monthly. So the one thing, I don't want to go back to parking, but um, the one thing that uh, I think we need to be discussing is we are trying to pedestrianize our community, particularly this area. So when you do bring um, events in, like the car show and that, why wouldn't you allow that parking um, for the car show or those kind of events and encourage people to do more walking along the boardwalk and down mm -hmm. on Main Street? Oh, and of course you could. It would be just a decision about, you know, that you take all this parking and that's a that's an event planning decision. There's parking here to put the car show in. It would just be an event planning um, and logistics planning for the event people to say have signage to say park over there. We'll, we'll give you a lift back. Because I'm not like uh, we need to pedestrianize in these, these spaces, and um, I think in most cases we don't have a parking problem. We have a nice amount of walking problem. Yes, and we need to encourage people to do that. And I'm just going to reiterate, reiterate again: we need to have an active transportation in here because we do not. We're missing an opportunity, and we will hear about it. No, you're right. Thank you. That's a good, very good point. Sharon, um, how do people feel about the kiosks? The idea of the seasonal kiosks. Do you see some demand for that kind of thing? I, again, it's going. It, it, I look at it, and I look at it from my business brain, and I say, what can I make in six months? Yeah. And that's summer. Short-term businesses are very difficult. Yeah. Like something that you only run for five or six months a year, so. I'm both ways on that one. Yeah. I love I love the idea because they're, um, but it's it's mm. going to be fairly limited. So I, somebody I like the idea of kiosks more in that location yeah. on the pier. Because I always thought this before this, I was thought using Main Street and Matheson Street piers mm -hmm. to do kind of the same. Yes, like the one summer when the group up did a, I think it was the day we did just the plaid event. Down on the second on Matheson. And they, yeah, and well, no, they had the plot event at the harbor front. Right. But it was the same day where they they did the uh, beer on the pier. Beer on the pier. Beer on the pier. And it was, you know, I just think there's lots of, uh, so if it would work there, it would probably work really well. So our construction drawings can show these, but it doesn't mean you have to build them, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And we can show a design for a kiosk. And I would say I agree, and I think that. Say, for example, you guys decide to build this seating area for us, but you don't put this little pavilion um, or the pier yet. There's still opportunity to build, there's some opportunity and space to still build like seasonal kiosks that you can trial out some of these ideas that we heard that people said, why isn't market day every day? Maybe not the full deal, but some of it. Well, then you could, you can explore the idea of having you know, uh, uh, some of those people who would want to be here five days a week or three, a shared kiosk, you know, that they come and set up. 
the idea of selling beverages. If you don't have a restaurant down here, but maybe you have something that just sells beverages and ice cream, that kind of thing. Yeah, so it's it's just playing off those ideas. Um, yes. Next phase of public engagement, are we, is, this, is the public going to have an opportunity again to go over this, or what's the? So the plan is, and I can put it up on the screen, but it's easy to tell you. So yes. our, our first step was um, seeing the implementation team, and then we came to see you guys. Now what we're doing is based on the comments we provide, were provided for the implementation team, we will then evolve the design. Okay. We also have uh, an engagement plan, or we are planning engagement with the city right now with First Nations, because some of these things require their input. And once we have some initial engagement with the First Nations groups, as well as additional with our project management team, they'll preview what we've drawn. We'll go back to the implementation team, which is the larger city group. Mm -hmm. They'll give us comments. And once we do that, we'll go to the public and it'll look, they've seen this. They've seen this, but it will have evolved from this and have more detail that they can comment on. We won't be so far that we can't change anything. We'll be at the point that We've evolved the ideas further than a master plan and get comments from them. We'll go back to the drawing board. We'll you know, go into more detail and make changes based on the public's commentary. Um, our project management team and our, our uh, city implementation team will review that. We have one-on-one -on -one discussions already started with people at the city regarding their perspective areas. And then we'll go back to the public again. And But in that time, it'll be like, an open house of okay. here's where we ended up. <laughs> yeah, because the only comment I wanted to add, like the Wooner for Wooner for having Wooner. Plans. so that that Wooner. area. I mean, when I look at these plans, it looks to me like Bernie Drive is totally blocked off, and I think that's that's set up temporarily with the bowlers. So yes. I don't know if there's a way to update that drawing so that people don't interpret it that way. That's think, a great idea. I think we will get public pushback. Because that's a main thoroughfare. Like when there's a lot of traffic on Main Street, people do detour through the harbor front. So, so during business hours, that's a great days, like people need to know that that's still a thoroughfare. Yeah, you know what? Um, uh, that's a really good point, and I think we can easily do that with some modeling to show cars yes. in it, as well as here it is on a regular day, and then here's what it looks like during harbor fest. Yeah, I think that's important. Yeah, that's good. That's a good point. Megan's writing notes for me, so. So Constantine, when I'm sort of standing in the middle. No, nope, that's okay. Okay. So when you met with the, I'm just gonna say CIT because I keep forgetting. What yeah, it's easier, isn't it? <laughs> Did they have any major deviations from what the original plan looked like or oh. things they wanted to change that were major? They're, they're, no, not yeah. major, but they had similar queries as in um, what should the docs be? Are they monthly or are they casual? What, what, what ratio should that be? So they had similar comments as you guys. Um, I think that uh, there was some, some good stuff from, from regarding what they'd like to see interpreted. Um, it was really just building on this. There was some discussion, more detailed considerations. We had lots of discussion about the washrooms and how we had perceived it, that it would be individual stalls rather than creating gendered rooms, you know, men, women, that would just be singular stalls. We asked them to explore that if they're on board with that concept. So is the Asian model where there's just holes in the floor and everybody Oh yeah, that's clean. Uh, uh, well, Italian. They put the porcelain <laughs> on the ground and then you just stand over yeah. it. It's cl probably cleaner than sitting on a toilet. But I can't believe I'm being taped right now. I can't really believe it. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, so, so what's her experience so, in Hong Kong? So we're, we're getting into detailed discussions with the CIT more. They've sort of, a lot of them were part of the master plan mm -hmm. process. So they're kind of bought into where things are, nobody wants things necessarily moved. It's that that's great, except sort of maybe some, you know, just property line requirements that we have to adjust. There is some concern about the runner and how it works, and you know, going curbless. You know, so we we have uh, marching orders to to work with the roads department. You know, so we'll be checking in with all those groups. So it's more technical stuff that we're getting, I would say. Do you remember anything major that I'm missing? Um, the big one was that parking on the north side, like the right. opportunity to sear off the top of the hill um, in favor of um, having additional parking there versus the mm -hmm. lane drives. So yes. That was something that came out. 
and and we're we're exploring that because they were thinking that um, you know your view of of the lakefront will be all the backs of those cars, you know, and, and is that attractive, you know? So can we put more parking on the on the north side? So we're looking into that. We have to look at obviously the property lines as well as um, KGS is going to do some geotechnical investigation on that hill and just see. It, it, you know, when you look at it, there's definitely rock there. It's just what kind of rock, you know, can, is it easily um, taken down? Yeah. All right, so we're getting close to the end of our time. Is there things that you want to well, really? Well, no, I guess I felt like I would just, if there was any major deviations for you guys or any new things that um, you think should be happening on the harbor front that's not explicitly shown, um, you know, you, it, you're put on the spot right now, so of course you can always share that with Kyle, Adam, and Megan, and they'll get that to me. Um, but I think that would be important for me to hear now, because as our team mobilizes to work with the public and with the teams to detail this, it's very important that we get it right. This is an important step. So, Constantina, we've, we've, we're talking about the buildings. We, we've talked about how we're not focused on the buildings right now. Like, at what time do you see us maybe turning our focus to the building? Because well, that is a key part of the plan. Well, the buildings are a big investment. So, and I, and you're right. To me, um, particularly, the rest of our is a great money maker, depending on what kind of governance model you go you go after. But um, I think it needs to be geared to um, the the federal monies and what they're wanting to see. I think there's um, for the. The water pavilion, we call it, because it's supposed to be a net zero building, there will be federal money, probably, if not already, you know, uh, towards that kind of thing. And I think that, that you guys, Kenora has been fabulous at following the money. Mm -hmm. So you have a master plan, and now it's following where the money is coming from, matching funds and that sort of thing. So timing does really depend. In our master plan, we talk about partnerships as well. And I'll just say this, that something like this, for example, could be a partnership with First Nations because um, they have an interest and we're excited to be part of this when we last talked to them. And so we have to keep those conversations open um, because they may have an interest and they can leverage probably money you can't and um, so, you know, having partnerships to develop somewhere where they feel they can educate people about First Nations would be fabulous. I'm glad that you said that, Matt. That should be the priority because, I mean, we already have a discovery center, which is kind of an interpretive center, so I don't want to duplicate what we have going on there yes. in this location. So that's that was going to be my comment. I didn't want to get too far into the building stuff. Yeah. But that's not the purpose of I think, I think there's lots of options, you know, sort of, you know, <laughs> Maybe not quite a conference center, but an opportunity for some meeting rooms. And, and well, I think there's some ways we can think about how to use that structure. People really talked about that there's not a lot of like four season opportunities on this waterfront that they can have a wedding banquet or, you know, so this space could be very uh, fluid and, uh, and um, flexible as well. Um, so, yeah, there's lots of the, and, and that we had as part of our team. Uh, we did have a business analyst who did the market analysis, high level for a master plan. But I mean, um, as you move into these things, the, you know, using um, these types of professionals is helpful. You know, we've often um, severed off a project like this and then studied it with a team of um, business al analysts, we know a few that we work with that we like, and they will come up with a plan. You know what I mean? Of how, how do you fund it? How do you? And that's like a, its own little study. Yeah. But this is um, the master plan for a longer term vision. You know, you're not going to see all these things tomorrow. Um, you know, there's things, some of them as Megan said, are easier to sort of chip away at, you know, um, but the other ones, we shouldn't lose sight of them because they're important. Um, so part of our marching orders will be, um, one of the things that we would want to hear, and I know I'll be asking your project management team, and I don't know, they're gonna have to answer this for me, is, is as we build this, and we do construction drawings for this, and we're bringing services, say, to this washroom, 
Should we be considering that these other facilities might go ahead as we size services? Yeah. You know? I, I would yeah. personally, plan, I, I think we need to plan for yeah, it. Yeah, build yeah. for the future <clears throat> yeah. or design for the yeah. future. Yeah, and as best we can, we'll mitigate that. You know, see if there's other ways our engineering team is happy to sort of look, okay, well, you know what? We don't have to worry about this because you know services can come from over there. But we will be, our team will be thinking about that if you want us to. But if you said to me, there's no way in a million years we're going to do that, then we won't, you know? So as it get, becomes more serious, the further along in our process we go when we start sizing pipes and stuff. Yeah. Can I see just a, a quick comment? Go back to something more that said, with the power, uh, I, I'm not sure the right term, now, the power of it's on our front, even going along um, the harbor front out towards Husky and Musky, because it's always been an issue on Main Street. Uh, when, when Main Street's closed down and we have the vendors, you can see all these extension cords running and running and, you know, uh, noise with diesel and... Uh, extension cords for what? Sorry. Well, no, but on Main Street, um, on some of the things, because we don't have the power that sets the teacher, because that's all I'm saying. No, no, of course. And yeah. it, it, I'm, sorry, I now I know what, what you're... I thought it, it was something... No, it wasn't plugging the car into the winter. I, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> no. I was like, what? No, um, and I think, you know, for when we did Harbor Front, we, yeah, I think we did a pretty good job of putting in plugs for like food trucks and yeah. making sure we had lots of meetings with your people. When we did Harbor Front, we met with your Harbor Fest organizers, your KBI organizers, and your Market Day organizers. I actually sat down with each of those heads. Of who organized that, and we, we we said, okay, this is how you used to do it over here in that parking lot. Here's how we think you can do it. Is that okay? You know, so we're going to have to have those kinds of conversations with each of your events organizers, sort of like market day 